Welcome to Catacombs Conquest. This is a simple dexterity game for two to four players designed by Elzra. I think I'm saying that right. As an introduction to their trademarked dexterity game system, originally developed for the award-winning dungeon crawler Catacombs, and further refined in its expansions and sequels. At the time of this video being released, a four to eight player sequel similar to Catacombs Conquest, but slightly more advanced, Catacombs and Castles, is in the last few days of a Kickstarter campaign for its second edition. A dexterity game, by definition, involves a player using dexterous actions. In this case, and in most cases, that means flicking wooden discs around the table. Don't plan on getting comfortable in the seats around that table, because you'll be standing up and moving around to line up your shots a lot. It's more akin to shooting a game of pool than playing a hand of poker. In Catacombs Conquest, the Sword Team and the Skull Team compete to see who's better at flicking stuff. Before you do anything, you'll need to put a bunch of stickers onto the wooden discs. There's a page in the rulebook that offers instructions on this process. And there's another page that tells you how to assemble the boundary walls you'll be using. This is an ingenious bit of engineering to make sure that when you flick pieces around the table, you don't accidentally flick them all around the room. Place the five obstacle discs in the center of the play area as evenly dispersed as possible. Both teams should agree on their placement. They'll move around the play area throughout the game as stuff bumps into them and players flick them around, but try to keep things as fair as possible to start off. If you're playing with an optional 24 inch by 14 inch playmat, the play area is defined by the playmat's edges. If not, just use the boundary walls. If, in the process of flicking discs, one of them leaves the play area, just put it back on the edge, roughly where it left. Playmats may make for a slightly smaller play area, but they also make flicking these discs around a little smoother and easier. And the official Catacombs Conquest playmats also have faint circles to indicate where these discs are supposed to start. Each team places their two character discs in opposite corners on their team's side of the play area only as far from the corner as necessary to be able to flick. In a two-player game, both players will control both characters for their team. In a three-player game, one player will control both characters on one team, and the other two players will each control one character on the other team. And in a four-player game, each player controls one character. Give each team eight double-sided health tokens, making sure your team's icon is face up. And yes, this means that your team's health is shared between both characters. Leave the unused health tokens in an easily accessible part of the table we'll refer to as the health bank. Eight isn't your max health, it's just what you start with. Shuffle the two team decks separately. In a two or four player game, draw four cards from your team's deck. In a three player game, the player controlling two characters draws eight cards instead. Randomly decide which team takes the first action, and refer to the turn cards to determine which character on that team goes first. Start your turn by drawing a single card from your team's deck. Then, choose one card to play by putting it face up in your team's discard pile. Along with a bunch of icons and words and stuff that mean something to somebody, all cards have a shot sequence, indicated by a row of one or more shot icons. These are the actions you'll take whenever you play a card. On a rush shot, flick your character disc to a new position. No damage is inflicted if you hit another character. On a melee shot, flick your character disc in the direction of one or more enemy characters. Deal one point of damage to any enemies your character disc comes into contact with by removing one of their health tokens. And since each team's health pool is shared between both characters, that means you can deal two points of damage to the enemy team if you manage to hit both enemy characters in one flick. Your character disc stays in its new position afterwards. If the melee shot icon is red instead of white, that's a critical melee shot, which deals double the damage. On a missile or fireball shot, place the corresponding small shot disc within one inch of your character's disc and flick it. Deal one point of damage to any enemies it hits. Your character disc doesn't move on a missile or fireball shot. On a longbow shot, place the longbow shot disc next to either character disc on your team and flick it, dealing damage just like a missile or fireball. On a wave shot, 
do the same thing as a missile or fireball, but use the large wave shot disc instead. The power wave shot is similar, but it deals two points of damage. And if you discard a card from your hand after a successful hit, it deals one more. If any of the ranged shots has a target modifier around it, indicate which enemy character disc you're aiming for before you flick. If you miss, you may flick again from where the disc landed after the first attempt. The catch here, though, is you can only inflict damage to your target, not both enemy characters. In Catacombs Conquest, any shot sequence that includes more than one shot will always indicate the order of events from left to right, with each shot separated by a right-facing arrow, and every shot in the shot sequence is mandatory. If a shot that would deal damage to an enemy results in you hitting your own teammate, don't worry, there's no friendly fire in this game. Your team doesn't lose any health from hitting itself, it just makes you look like a bit of an idiot. After playing a card and executing the shot sequence, you get to perform a rush shot on any one of the big obstacle discs you choose. You can't deal damage this way, but it could help protect you from the counterattack. Then, end your turn by flipping your team's turn tracker card to the opposite side. The other team gets a turn next, but once they flip their turn tracker card, the other character on your team is up. Some cards have text underneath the shot sequence that describes an ability. These should be self-explanatory, but check the rulebook if you're confused. If the card has an armor icon, instead of placing it in the discard pile, leave it face up on the table in front of you. Then, during an opponent's turn, either player on your team can choose to discard a face-up armor card to block all damage inflicted by a single shot, along with any supplemental ability effects from the card that triggered the shot that required damage to be inflicted. The game immediately ends when a team loses all their health tokens, all the health tokens in the health bank are used up, or a player cannot play a card from their hand when they have to. At the end of the game, whichever team has the most health tokens is declared the winner. And just for clarification, when a team's deck is depleted, the discard pile is not automatically reshuffled. If you need to replenish the deck, you'll have to do it with the reset ability on a card like Phoenix or Witch Hunter. And that's it. That's how you play Catacombs Conquest. Hey, my name's Kyle McCarley. I'm a voice actor by trade, but board games are one of my favorite hobbies. If you like board games, you should check out The Board and Barrel every Friday night at 7.30 Pacific on twitch.tv slash Kyle McCarley, where me and my buddies play board games. We also give you guys a chance to help us or hurt us, depending on how you feel, with our buff and nerf house rules. And we have virtual bingo cards you can fill out while you're watching the show. It's a good time. Hope to see you there.